Imagine that you are in the plane at unknown distance from the place where a nuclear weapon will be detonated. Is it possible for the aircraft to survive? Let's find out. The deciding factors are distance from the ground zero and the actual explosive power of the bomb. Typical USA nuclear warhead, for example, V87 has 350 kilotons yield. I didn't find exact effects for such numbers, but let's just say a 500 kilotons bomb is detonated. If you were standing 3.2 kilometers or 2 miles away from the ground zero, you would still be annihilated with 10 pounds per square inch overpressure. Overpressure is the pressure caused by a shock wave. If we are standing in the middle of plain fields at 3.2 kilometers, you would experience burst eardrums, destroyed lungs, ruptured blood vessels and possibly death from being blown away. At that distance, even reinforced concrete buildings are usually demolished. So this distance is a no-go for most of the buildings, let alone airplanes. An Ola Gay plane was around 18.5 or 11 miles away from a little boy when the plane experienced shockwave. This little boy bomb had only 15 kilotons yield. That's more than 20 times less powerful device than average V87 warhead. But even if these new warheads are so powerful, their overpressure quickly drops thanks to a square cube law. Even 500 kilotons device would lose most of its blast effects 16 kilometers or 10 miles away within a 6 kilometer 3.7 miles radius of a 1 megaton bomb blast waves would produce 180 metric tons of force on walls of buildings and wind speeds of 255 kilometers per hour or 160 miles per hour in one kilometer or half mile radius the peak pressure is four times that amount and wind speeds can reach 760 km per hour, or almost 500 miles per hour. So more than two times faster winds than in the most powerful recorded tornado, El Reno. There are few ways of delivering a nuclear bomb. You just can't simply throw it and then fly straight as an arrow. One of the reasons is because the bomb still carries quite enough speed and follows the plane. It is better for the plane to immediately turn after the throw, or do so-called Immelman turn. There is also a way to deliver it from an extreme altitude. Now little boy and even V87 warhead seems to be quite safe when running from them away on a plane. You wouldn't need to cover much distance to reduce the risk. But when it comes to the largest nuclear bomb, Tsar Bomba, it's a different story. It had a yield of 50 megatons, or 3300 times more powerful than the little boy which was dropped on Hiroshima. So that sounds like quite a dangerous weapon, even if you were far away. Back in the 1960s, Soviets redesigned Tupolev 295 bomber plane into a special nuclear bomb carrier. It was heavily modified, which includes more power from engines, better suspension, special bomb bay, release mechanisms, and so on. Tsar Bomba on the plane also had a parachute, which slowed its descent time. This plane was also covered with a special reflective white paint. This was done to reflect most of the thermal radiation from a nuclear explosion, protecting the aircraft and its occupants. The initial flash from the explosion can cause a temporary or permanent blindness. Hydrogen weapons, such as Tsar Bomba, can reach temperatures up to 100 million degrees Celsius, or 55 million degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, it was estimated that the heat from the blast would have caused 30 degree burns up to 62 miles or 100 kilometers distance. Tupolev 295V managed to escape 39 kilometers or 24 miles when detonation occurred. Thermal radiation instantly hit this plane and lasted for up to 70 seconds. However, thanks to the reflective white paint, it passed the test and was still flying. But I also have to mention that some of this paint was probably vaporized. Now after flash was gone, pilots were still running away from the shockwave at full speed. At 39 kilometers or 24 miles the plane would have been annihilated by the shockwave. So the pilots were literally running for their lives. According to my calculations, the average speed of Tupolev plane was 831 kilometers per hour or 516 miles per hour. 
after 115 kilometers, around 70 miles, shockwave which going close to a speed of sound, finally caught up with the plane and it hit it so hard that the 295V dropped one kilometer in the air, but it was able to recover and land safely. Even glass windows which were 900 kilometers or 560 miles away from the explosion were partly shattered. What's even crazier is that the pilots operating the plane were only given a 50% chance of survival. Even though the fireball was really big when it comes to nuclear devices, it posed no risk to the airplane since the fireball was just 8 kilometers wide or 5 miles. Of course, if you were this close, you would be instantly turned into ash or set on fire. Assuming you somehow are able to survive the thermal radiation and the shockwave. If you are still in the sky, that means you survived EMP, the electromagnetic pulse or EMP created by the release of the bomb's gamma rays, can overload and damage the electric system of the plane, making it likely to crash. But it's a different story with military and some commercial airplanes. Especially military planes are well protected. For example, there is one type of aircraft called the Doomsday Plane. Only USA and Russia are known to have these special planes which act as a flying command post. It is built with thermal and nuclear shielding and direct fire countermeasures. It is also proofed against radiation. In case of successful EMP penetration or cyber attack, it also has analog flight instruments. So in human words, pilots would still be able to control it. Other information is kept classified. But I believe that no matter the technology, shockwave can still pose a serious risk to any aircraft. Wrapping it all up, in case it happened and you were on a plane, first you better hope it was designed to withstand the thermal pulse. One participant in the Tsar Bomba test saw a bright flash through a dark goggles and felt the effects of thermal pulse even at the distance of 270 kilometers or 168 miles. Also in clear air the 50 megaton test was capable in principle of inflicting third degree burns at a distance of up to 100 kilometers or 60 miles. Doomsday E-40B can fly up to 602 miles per hour or 970 kilometers per hour. So when the shockwave hits you, you better hope that the shockwave pressure has dropped enough for the plane to survive that vicious shake. But realistically, today most of nuclear weapons are much smaller and more compact. So the chance that the plane will end up running from some sort of a gargantuan megaton warhead is quite low. I don't know about you, but personally, I wouldn't want to see even the smallest nuke in action. Still not as dangerous to a plane as a random pigeon 